Good morning, and welcome to the little apartment on the prairie. I went fishing yesterday with my neighbor and her uncle, High Whiskers, and I just thought I'd tell you about it. Um, I don't know if you're interested in fishing or not, but even if you're not, there were kind of some interesting, it was an interesting experience. We were gone much of the day, and it was really nice to just be away from my phone, away from my computer, away from everything. It was really hot, which was unfortunate, but it was still really nice. We were at this beautiful place, um, this lake. You had to walk a little ways from the car to get to the lake, and there was no one else there, so it was very quiet, very peaceful. My neighbor's uncle is almost 80 years old, and man, I wish I was in as good a shape as he was in. He doesn't move too fast, but... He's in good shape. I bet you he can walk forever. And, you know, we had this big, heavy bucket of fish. He had no trouble picking up that bucket of fish and carrying it back to the car when we were done. Um, no trouble at all. So, it, it was just really nice to be away from everything. After a while, I got kind of tired of fishing. and I was hot. It was so hot. So, I actually had like a half-frozen bottle of water. And so I poured some of the cold water on myself to cool off and had something to drink. And then I just lay on my back for a while in the grass. It was like that tall prairie grass that's somewhere between knee high and waist high. And just watched the clouds move through the sky. And it was very peaceful. We also got a lot of fish, which was good. Um, my dog enjoys eating them. It was kind of, well, I, so here's a couple of fishing things I learned. One is we get there. And we start getting our stuff out of the truck. And he has this sled, like a child's plastic sled, like, you know, a cheap one that you'd buy at, I don't know, the dollar store or something in the winter. And he piles all his gear on it and then pulls it through the grass to the lake. And he said he tried a wagon once, but it didn't work very well in the tall grass, that the sled works better. And he called it a sledge, which is just such an old-fashioned kind of word. I just loved it. Anyway, so that's a trick that I learned, which would be good, I think, not only for fishing, but for camping or other things. Sometimes I want to park it. I want, would like to camp at a campsite that's, you know, you have to walk a little ways from where you can park. But it's so hard to carry all my gear, and I have to make so many trips and stuff. But... Pulling it on a sled, if the ground is right, would be a really good idea. So I learned that. Then he was going to bait my hook for me. And I'm like, you know, I know how to put a worm on a hook. And he says, oh, I don't think you do. I'm going to show you. And I said, well, I know the way my neighbor, your niece, showed me how to do it. So if I don't know how to do it right, it's her fault. So he says, see, that's what I mean. I'm going to show you. So he takes this big, fat, long worm, and he puts it on the hook. And then he gets a second worm and puts a second worm on the hook. And there's like this big ball of worms on my hook. And I'm like, yeah, my, my neighbor, she only uses one worm. And if it's a really long one, she cuts it in half. So she can, you know, get more use out of it. He's like, yeah. Well, so I went and I started fishing with those two worms on my hook, and I caught this big, well, I'm, it's probably not that big. It's bigger than most things I've caught, let's put it that way, bass. And then I caught another bass that was even bigger. And my neighbor hadn't caught anything yet, and she's like, how come I'm not catching any? And I said, apparently you don't use enough worm on your hook. Um... So he's like, if you want to catch bigger fish, you got to have bigger bait. You put a little bitty worm on there, you're going to get a little bitty fish, which totally makes sense. Um, so I learned that. That's about all I learned about fishing. Um, but I love her uncle. He's almost 80 years old, and I have the feeling he knows all the kinds of stuff that I wish I knew, like about gardening and raising chickens and... I don't know, fishing and just all kinds of stuff. And he's he's a neat old guy. So that was fun. Um, but I also just learned how much I enjoy, like I kind of knew this, but I guess I forgot it. I learned how much I enjoyed just sitting outside in nature and 
just sitting by a lake with nothing to do but sit there. I'm like, you know, I could take a picnic lunch. I could hang out at the lake for a long time. Um, it was nice. Oh, one other thing I learned about fishing. So I have this little tackle box. It's not that big, you know. And my neighbor has one. It's about the same size as mine. Um, her uncle, instead of a tackle box, he has a backpack. And he's like, it's a lot easier to carry. I like this a lot better than a tackle box. I'm really glad I got it. He's got one that's got a whole bunch of different pockets and stuff in it. So you can put stuff in different pockets. I'm like, that's a good idea. Um, I have some problems with my back. So I couldn't carry anything real heavy on my back. But, you know, I could carry a backpack that had the gear that's in my tackle box. Because my tackle box is not heavy. And probably half of its weight is the box itself, which is cheap plastic, which, eh, you know, it's plastic. But that's what they had at Walmart, and it was affordable. So, um, but the backpack was a great idea, and the sled to pull things was a great idea. Around here, most lakes you go to, now it's going to be different in different parts of the country, but around here you're going to be walking through really tall grass in many places to get to the lake or to the river or to whatever. And, um, you know, you wouldn't want to pull the plastic sled over gravel or it might not go as well over dirt, but it goes really well over this grass. So that was just a great idea. And I'm totally buying a sled this winter to use for that purpose. Um, so anyway, that's what I did yesterday. I came home. I let my neighbor take between the two of us. We had caught 28 fish. And I let her take all the bass. And we had some bluegill. Some of them were really big and some of them were not as big. We threw the really little ones back. So I let her take the big ones. And then I kept the smaller ones for my dog because she eats the meat. And she and another neighbor share the meat. And so, uh, but she saved me all the fish heads because Isaac likes the fish heads the best. It's his favorite part. I don't know why. So anyway, she saved me all the fish heads and kept the rest of the meat. And then I took the, had the smaller fish and saved those for Isaac. I freeze them for three weeks before he eats them. Um... What you're supposed to do if you're feeding them to your dog raw, any like wild food you catch that you're feeding to your dog. Same goes if you're hunting. In case there's some kind of parasites in it, apparently freezing them for three weeks kills them. I'm not sure why it's three weeks. I don't know who came up with that. It's probably not the precise amount of time that it should be, but that's kind of a general rule of thumb people use um, or guideline people use. So, anyway, that's what I did yesterday. Uh, now today I've got to get a lot of housework done that I didn't do yesterday because I decided to go fishing. And that's the other thing that I kind of realized yesterday. Like, I've realized it before. Whiskers out of my face, please. But that's one of the things I really like about my life is that I can just decide. Can you this cat hair floating around? Good grief. I can just decide, at, ouch, man, that hurt, at the spur of the moment, yeah, I'm going to go fishing today and just take off and go fishing and whatever I was going to do. Go get your toy, Isaac. Go get it. Go get the toy. Go get it. I threw it. You still had a treat in there. Go find it. Now I threw his toy and he doesn't know where it went. I can just get up and decide, okay, today I'm going fishing and I can do that for the day. All right, so now I'm going to go get some stuff done, and Isaac's starting to bug me. You all have a good day. Uh, let me know what you're doing this weekend. Everybody stay safe and well.